What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 221002 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about screen locks, remote wipes, locator applications, remote backup applications, failed login attempt restrictions, antivirus, anti-malware, patching, operating system updates, biometric authentication, full device encryption, multi-factor authentication, authenticator applications, trusted versus untrusted sources, firewalls, and policies and procedures. Let's talk about screen lock. So in general, a screen lock is an interface on a computer, smartphone, or tablet that appears upon startup. Access to all the device's applications are limited when it is locked, preventing unauthorized users from accessing the device's data. When a password is entered or the device is unlocked with biometrics, the home screen, desktop, or app launcher is displayed and usable. A screen lock can be a pattern that is drawn on the display, a pin or a passcode lock or a password. Typically, the strongest form of a screen lock is a very strong password. Some devices like smartphones include finger locks where a user's fingerprint is matched against the list of authorized user fingerprints and face locks where a user's face is matched against a list of authorized user faces. Remote wipes. So a remote wipe refers to a system where an administrator has the ability to remotely delete data on a hardware device or system. During a remote wipe, the deletion is triggered from a remote system endpoint. Many types of remote wipes can be set up in different ways. The remote wipe can target company specific information or erase all information on a device or system. In many cases, the remote wipe is designed to provide quick and effective solutions to security breaches or other crisis. Locator applications. So locator applications like Find My iPhone for iOS and Android Device Manager for Android can help a user find a lost device. As long as the power is on and the geolocation is working, these apps can be operated from other phones with a similar app to help find the location of the lost device. Remote backup application. So a remote online or managed backup service, sometimes marketed as cloud backup or backup as a service, is a service that provides users with a system for the backup storage and recovery of computer files. With a mobile device, there are two ways to back them up by way of a USB connection to a desktop or laptop computer or to the cloud with a remote backup application. Apple has a free cloud backup service called iCloud that offers up to five gigabytes of free storage space with more space available by subscription. iTunes, which can be used for USB-based backup, enables the entire device to be backed up to a hard drive at no additional cost. Google Cloud offers Android users a free backup for email, contacts, and other information with Android to back up photos, music, and other content. It has to be backed up manually via USB or file sync to the cloud using services such as is Dropbox. For iOS and Android, other third-party cloud-based application services are also supported, such as iDrive and Carbonite. Failed login attempt restrictions. This prevents unauthorized users from gaining access to a mobile device. If the unauthorized user enters the incorrect PIN or passcode after a certain number of attempts, the device could either temporarily lock for a specified amount of time before allowing the user to enter another PIN or passcode, or the device could perform a remote wipe of the hard drive after multiple failed login attempts. Antivirus and anti-malware. So antivirus, anti-malware software is a computer program that is used to prevent, detect, and remove malware on computers and mobile devices. Some antivirus, anti-malware third-party applications for Android include McAfee, Virus Scan Mobile, AVG, Lookout, and NetQuinn. Due to the closed nature of the iOS environment, it is somewhat more difficult to write viruses for iOS devices. However, Apple does allow the installation of previously unavailable applications and software originally not authorized by Apple. So the installation of third-party antivirus, anti-malware mobile applications is now possible. 
patching and operating system update so just like for desktop and laptop computers mobile devices need their applications and operating systems to be patched and updated as well to manually update these devices just follow the following steps android you would just go to settings general about device and then software update or settings about device software update and check for updates with ios hit the settings button go to general and then hit software update Biometric authentication. This is a form of identification and access control. Android and iOS use biometric authentication by way of built-in fingerprint readers or facial recognition software to gain access to these mobile devices. Microsoft also has a product called Microsoft Windows Hello, which is a biometric authentication mechanism similar to that of Apple's Face ID. Full drive encryption, so full disk encryption is a technology that protects information by converting it into unreadable code that cannot be deciphered easily by unauthorized people. Full device encryption encrypts information on a device and prevents access to that device unless a user knows the PIN or passcode to access the device. Android and iOS devices automatically apply full device encryption the moment the authorized user of the device locks the device. Multi-factor authentication. This is an electronic authentication method in which a device user is granted access to a website or application only after successfully presenting two or more pieces of evidence to an authentication mechanism. Examples of multi-factor authentication would be using a username and password to sign into a website. Then the website would require you to enter a six digit code sent to your phone by way of a text message asking you to verify you are the actual authorized user of that account that is associated with that website. Authenticator applications. So authenticator apps, they generate a one-time code that you use to confirm that it is you logging into a website or service. The Google Authenticator app is the most popular authenticator app out there. It supports options to add or remove trusted computers and devices and works with the security key USB device. Other Authenticator apps that you could use are LastPass Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, and Authy, A-U-T-H-Y. Then we have trusted sources versus untrusted sources. So trusted sources are simply links to trustworthy websites and applications. Google Play for Android, the Apple Store for iOS, and Microsoft Store for Windows 10 Mobile are trusted sources for downloading and installing apps on mobile devices. Downloading and installing apps outside of these stores are considered untrusted sources. And to do that, that often requires you to jailbreak the device, which removes these security measures that are built into the device. Firewalls. These are network security systems that monitor and control incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. Android and iOS do not include firewalls for their devices by default, although there are third party apps that can install firewalls on Android devices to provide protection against unwanted Internet traffic. And let's talk about some policies and procedures. So nowadays, more and more companies are allowing for their workers to utilize their personally owned mobile devices on corporate networks. To allow for these devices to access the network, companies are implementing policies and procedures to prevent these devices from causing potential security threats to the network. And the first one we got to talk about is BYOD versus corporate owned devices. So BYOD. So this refers to allowing an individual to use their personally owned device on the corporate network rather than being required to use an official provided device. And the benefits of a BYOD policy are as follows. It saves the organization money and the employee can go out there and purchase their own device. Employees will more than likely use their own device more often and it can increase productivity. Some of the potential disadvantages include the costs that are associated with the management and security of the BYOD device on the network. And also some employees may simply not want to use their own personal device on the corporate network for official business. 
And then we have profile security requirements. So regardless of if the organization allows for the use of BYOD corporate owned devices or a mixture, the company has to establish security requirements to allow for the productivity to take place while minimizing potential security risks. Setting up device security profile requirements include items such as the following, allowing only approved operating system versions on devices, implementing password and lock screen policies, requiring device encryption, support issues, and policies set up for when an employee leaves the organization as it directly relates to the information and data on the employee's device. All right, let's do some of this wonderful check on learning real quick. So the first question is, which of the following erases data on a lost or stolen mobile device? Is it remote lock, degaussing, low level formatting or remote wipe? So which one erases data on a lost or stolen device? The correct answer is uh, a remote wipe. Next question. A mobile device is built in functionality enabling the usage of locator applications is known as what is it WPS GSM IMEI or GPS. So a mobile device is built in functionality that enables the usage of a locator app is known as what the correct answer is the GPS. You need that thing to be on and working if you want to use a application such as find my iPhone to locate your lost device. Next question. Which of the following examples meet the requirement of multi-factor authentication on a mobile device? Is it fingerprint scan and password, password and pin, face scan and fingerprint scan, or pin and swipe lock pattern? So which of the following examples meet the requirements of multi-factor authentication on a mobile device? The correct answer is a fingerprint scan and password. Why? Because you need at least two pieces of evidence. The first piece here, fingerprint scan. That is something that you are. Your fingerprints are unique to you. And the password is something that you know. All right. So in summary, we have talked about all of this wonderful stuff on your screen right here. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead, hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA A plus 221002 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace. Thank <laughs> you.